Hi third grade, I miss you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed your spring break and I can't wait to get back to learning. So I'm here to let you know that your teachers this week are going to be doing some videos. We're gonna record videos and these will be review videos of the skills that you've learned previously in the school year, okay? And so this week we'll just be reviewed. Next week we're gonna start learning some new skills. So get super excited because I can't wait for you to see all the fun things that your teachers are planning for you, okay? So I'm going to re be reviewing close reading, okay? I'm just going to talk about what close reading is, why we do close reading, um, and the different parts of it, okay? So, like I said, welcome to the close reading review, all right? So let's just talk about why we call it close reading. The reason we call this reading close reading is because we will be reading the same text closely, meaning we're gonna read the same text more than one day. We're gonna read it for about four days. And you guys are used to that, right? We'll read it maybe, you know, it depends on the day. Sometimes we'll do it two days. Sometimes we'll read it up to four different days, the same text, right? And the reason we read it closely and this many times is to really dive deep into the text and to learn all the parts of the text, why the author wrote it, what is it about, the author's craft moves that they make, and just to help our brains get bigger so we can become better readers and writers just like the authors of the text that we're reading, okay? All right. Now, I wonder if you guys remember this word. This word is called excerpt. This is excerpt. An excerpt is a part of a text. It is a part of a maybe chapter book. It might be one part of it or um, a big, a larger textbook. If it's a poetry book, it might be one of the poems. It's not going to be a long text. It's going to be a shorter text that is we're going to zoom into and read closely to really understand what it's about. Okay. So all of the readings that we read in close reading will be excerpts okay all right so i'm really excited to review the things that you really know and i'm excited because i know this is going to get your brain thinking and it's going to make you um want to learn even more who remembers this these letters stand for genre based thinking jobs right? And you're like, of course, Miss Hill, we know we have to do our thinking jobs. Well, first we figure out the genre and then we review the thinking jobs that are attached to that genre. Why do we think about these thinking jobs? Well, the point of those jobs is to give us something that something to think about or a job while we're reading these articles, while we're reading the text, and it'll help us think deeper about the text, and it'll help us understand the text more. So when we go to either explain the text, give a summary to someone, or answer the questions, um, in the text or um, questions on a quiz or a test about them, we'll really understand it because we've really read it, thought about the main parts, and then jotted down the answers in our thinking jobs chart, okay? So remember, we've got to think about what's the genre first, figure out the genre, and then we think about the thinking jobs that are attached to it, all right? So I'm going to show you our thinking jobs chart to get your mind going, your brain working, and, you, and you'll start to remember, oh yeah, I know all those genres. Genre is the different types of reading or text that we're going to read. And then the thinking jobs are right over here that are attached to that genre, okay? So the first one we have is poetry. When we read poetry, there are two main thinking jobs that we want to give ourselves, give our, our brain the job of thinking when we read poetry. The first one is literal. What is the literal meaning? Remember, literal meaning means what's actually happening. What are we reading about? Where is this taking place? What's happening? Um, and then the next one is the deeper meaning. The deeper meaning goes deeper than just what words are on the page, but what might the author be trying to tell us or communicate with us deeper than what's just literally happening in the text okay so that goes into like ooh, what's the author's point of view perspective and all those types of things so we have two thinking jobs here literal and deeper then when we go into realistic fiction right that's fiction that 
did not happen. So a text that did not happen, a story that didn't happen, but could happen. It could happen in real life, but did not, right? So we've got five different thinking jobs for that one. Who is the character? What is their motivation? That means like, what do they want to do? Or what are they wanting? What is the problem? Usually there's a problem, not always, but usually something goes wrong. And then how do they solve it? Again, usually there's a solution, but not always. And then what's the lesson learned? And remember, lesson learned is what is the lesson that you, the reader, can learn from reading this text, okay? Then we've got nonfiction. So in a nonfiction text, there's two main thinking jobs. There's two. The first one is teach. What does the author mostly want to teach me about this topic? And the reason it says mostly is because in a nonfiction text, there may be lots of facts that you learn, but what is the text mostly about? What is the author really trying to get you to, to learn from this text? And then the next one is point of view. What is the author's POV, point of view? Remember, point of view is like what, how does the author feel about this text? And not just like good or exciting. The author thinks that this topic is amazing. Go even deeper with point of view and what does the author think even deeper about that topic. So if it's a topic about whales, the author thinks that whales should be protected because blah, blah, blah. Not just that the author thinks whales are cool. It's gotta be more of what is the author thinking about this from the details in the text, okay? Then we've got a how-to. A how-to is another type of nonfiction because it's teaching you how to do something, right? So teaching you, so just like before teach, and how to do something, okay? Now, our next genre is another type of nonfiction. It is biography, okay? A biography is about a person or people, the Wright brothers. That, when we, when we read about them, that was a biography about them. And they are important people. So the reason we're learning about them is because they've had some key accomplishments. Something that something has happened in their lives, something either they've done or things that they fought for or created. They've accomplished some things in their lives to make them important. And it's like, so what? Meaning, so why are we learning about them? So your thinking jobs and biography are very similar to what is the author teaching us, but a teaching us about that important person and what are their accomplishments. Also, I would even add point of view here. So what's the author's point of view about these important people? Okay, then we've got fable, folktale, and fairy tale. These are types of fiction, meaning texts that did not really happen in real life. So we have some of the same um, thinking jobs as you did for the realistic fiction before. Okay, and the reason fable, folktale, and fairy tale are all in the same bucket, I don't know if, I hope you remember this. This is because they're all very similar, but they have some differences. Fairy tale usually has some type of um, once upon a time and some magic. Folk tale is something that happened a long, long time ago. And fable usually has um, animals in, in that one, okay? And so we've got characters, motivation again. What do those characters want? Problem, what went wrong? Solution, and what is the lesson learned? Excuse my dog, friends. What is the lesson learned or moral of the story? Meaning, what is the author trying to teach you, okay? And that you can use in your own life. Then we've got a myth. Myth is also another type of fiction, meaning a myth is something that um, you're learning about that did not actually happen. Or sometimes you can be reading like snake myths was a nonfiction text, but it was teaching us about different myths. So fake or fiction things. OK, but a myth, a text that is a myth is usually fiction or not real. OK, so we've got characters again. That's why we have similar 
thinking jobs just like before motivation problem how did they solve it or solution and what makes it different here is that a myth usually deals with a natural event and it explains it or there's a lesson so if it's not a natural event, there's going to be a lesson. But when they say natural event, they mean like um, there's like weather myths book, right? Um, I think my student Jared has a book like that. And it's like all the different weather myths or science myths. And it's explaining the natural event, meaning in the world, naturally in our environment, tornadoes. People think certain things about tornadoes and it's not true. People think certain things about weather and they're not true. So those may not have characters in those, but there are some other myths that actually have characters. Um, there's a myth about the Kraken, which is a a big scary monster right um in the sea so that would be a character and what does the kraken want motivation wants to um gobble up people in the sea so there's different types of myths that we're going to learn then we've got interview and interview there we go you only have one main thinking job here besides teach and POV because an interview is a type of nonfiction. So we're going back to nonfiction up here, which means facts. So interview, who is being interviewed and what do we learn from the interview? Okay, and then we've got, um, so letter. And a letter, it, the letter, there's three thinking jobs here. Who is it from? Who is it to? And what is the purpose? Okay. So why did they write this? Um, is for the bottom one. What is the purpose? Why did they write it? Who is it from? Who wrote this? And who is it to? Who are they writing this letter to? That will be your thinking jobs to help you understand the letter even more. And remember, interview was who is being interviewed. And what do we learn? Okay, friends, so in our next video, we will go deeper into close reading and actually go through one of the texts that we have and use those thinking jobs that we just went over, okay? And then later on in videos, we'll go through the different steps for multiple choice questions, the different steps to write a CER, all the things that we've learned, okay? We're going to be doing more videos of that this week. So can't wait to see you later. Bye!